So today's video we're going to be adding a push to break switch to our TV box. So I'm going to be using an MXQ to actually do this. You can use it on many different ones. You know, just make sure that you're, you know, you take your time and, you know, you don't do anything wrong because we don't want anything to happen to your board. We don't want anything, you know, to explode because at the end of the day we're adding with electricity. So, you know, you've got to be careful. If anything does go wrong, it's entirely your fault, guys. So just make sure you take your time and do things slowly. So in this video, I'm going to be using an MXQ box to actually do this. It's a very straightforward process. So as you can see in this video, I'm showing you right now how to take an MXQ box apart. This actual casing that I'm taking apart comes on a lot of cheaper boxes. So MXQ Pro, the SM1 box. We've also got the V88, which shares the same casing. So it's pretty much the same idea when taking it apart. So don't worry too much if you don't actually have this particular MXQ. Maybe you've got a different one. It's all basically the same, just take your time, especially take your time when it comes to taking Wi-Fi um, antennas out because they can be stuck onto the side of the casing and sometimes it can get stuck. And if you are too rigorous when you're taking the actual casing apart, you might end up actually snapping that Wi-Fi antenna. I've done it plenty of times and you know it just totally ruined your board. So just take your time and then hopefully everything goes okay for you. Once you're taking your box apart, we can then move on to the next step. So what I need you to do is take your motherboard out and locate the power input. So this thing just located here. Now what we need to do is on the underside we're going to be soldering a cable just here, just the back one. And on the front side we're going to be soldering another cable to the back of the power input. I'll go into a little bit more detail here but we're going to be soldering dryly directly onto here. Now this pin here, this actual metal piece, we actually need to cut in half. We need to disconnect it from the board. Now, the reason is because we need to actually make this actual, you know, push button switch work. And this is the terminal we're going to be using to actually turn into a switch. Now we're going to be using this Dremel to actually do this. Now we're going to be actually taking this and actually cutting to in between this metal now you don't have to use a dremel you might not actually have one but the way i did it i just literally cut this piece of metal in half using this dremel just right there as you can see now i don't know if that shows up on the camera but there is a cut right through that piece of metal so you need to now make an actual hole in your casing now this is where the actual push to break switch is going to sit now depending on the type of switch you've got make sure that it's actually directly opposite the actual power put power input now that just makes sure that you know the cables are going to be nice and straight and it's just going to make sure it's all neat and tidy now if you've got a square motherboard so make sure you look at which motherboard you've got inside your box first before actually purchasing a button and then you can decide which sort of size you can use i'm using quite a big one because i've got an l-shaped motherboard so it doesn't really matter i've got plenty of space to play around with if you've got a square motherboard it might be different now i've just went straight through the casing with a actual drill I'm not too fussed about it being nice and tidy because I've got an actual nice shroud just around the button so it covers up all any mistakes I make. But you guys, you probably want to do it a lot neater than me so you can align it up and do it properly. You can maybe make a pilot hole first and then drill right through and make it just nice and neat. And then just obviously make sure it's big enough for actually your button to sit through. Most of these buttons actually come with a bolt, uh, a nut even, and it just screws together and holds it nice and tight to your actual casing. So now we need to grab two cables. Now, they don't need to be thick cables because there's not a huge amount of voltage going through this, but you know, a decent piece of cable will be fine. And we just need to solder it on. So obviously you're gonna need a solder iron, some solder. I'll put the list of items you'll need in the description. So we need to solder it on to that back panel. Now, make sure that you actually solder it onto the piece of metal that's on the top. You know, we've cut it in two. So it's the top part, not the bottom part. So as you can see, I'm just soldering it on this red cable onto the top. And now I'll, I'll, I'll give you a closer look up once I'm finished. Okay. 
So flip your board upside down and underneath the actual power input you should see three little protruding pins. Now the bottom one as shown is the one where we need to solder to. So we need to solder another cable to this. So I'm going to be adding a little bit of solder just right now. And then I'm going to add the cable. So pull the cable over and then try and solder. Yeah, so we'll be able to solder it on pretty easily. Just add a bit of solder to it because the solder that they use in the factories is it's pretty tough and it needs quite a lot of heat to actually heat up. So we'll just use some basic solder to get it on. And once that's attached, then that's pretty much it. We now need to solder the other ends to the actual power switch. And we're almost there, folks. Not long to go. Okay, now all we need to do is uh, solder the other two ends of those cables onto the actual power switch. It's a very simple process, doesn't matter which way you have it round. Might be a bit fiddly, but if you've, well, I struggle a bit actually doing this myself. Yeah, there we go, it's not going on properly, but we'll get there. Maybe just need a little bit more solder on it to actually get it attached. But once you've actually done that, and got it all soldered on to each cable. Make sure that there's, you know, it's not touching each other or anything like that, or the, you know, the other soldering jobs you've actually just done isn't touching anything else. You can actually use something called heat shrink to protect those ends of the cables, just in case maybe your soldering isn't that great. I mean, mine's not perfect, it's a bit messy, so I could probably do with some heat shrink just to protect it from actually touching any of the metal components. You know, we don't want this thing going blowing up when we actually put it back together, because those cables are gonna move around just a little bit when we're actually going to be doing that so we don't want things touching touching other things you know because it, it'll just end in disaster otherwise so if you've got some heat shrink you know it's just a couple of pound off ebay or amazon or wherever and you know you can just tidy it up a little bit there we go that's me all soldered together i'll just make sure everything's secure and we can now move on to actually putting our box back together So now we can reassemble our board. Now, you are seeing a video on how to, how to actually do this. This actual piece of uh, video is actually taken from an old one we did. So don't worry, I've not actually got the button on this actual video clip. But to actually reassemble it is just basically the same. Just make sure that your cables are all tidy. Make sure they're not you know sticking out or getting trapped anywhere. As well as that, when I showed you it where to actually place the actual button, so obviously it's going to be on the front of the MXQ box, just directly located opposite the actual power input. Now on this motherboard is an L shape, but you might actually have just have a square motherboard. Now those motherboards will actually take up a lot more space, so you might need a smaller switch. So just check which actual motherboard you've got first before actually going and buy any switch. My switch is, you know, it's quite a bulky thing. You can get a lot of smaller ones. So if you can get hold of a smaller one, then perfect. It won't take much, as much room. Just make sure you align it properly so things can actually go back together. And you won't have too many issues with that. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and we shall see you on the next one.